Mitch. Hey, my name is Mitch Watson, and uh, I will be the uh, uh, I will be the wagon master for 2014 for the um, Ochoco Odyssey Trail Run. So um, that's, that's something we're not going to do. But we're going to experience the 
life about it. We're going to experience problem solving. There will be problems. We're going to experience uh, fun. We're going to experience um, uh, spirit, lots of spirit going on. And uh, we're going to try to uh, get people to um, just uh, enjoy every bit of this trip. Um, we have lots of uh, resources available. Uh, we have plenty of people that have been this trip for many years. And uh, all facets, facets are taken care of. Uh, initially, we got uh, the medical group that would take care of the medical troubles, you know, so we kind of have that in the background, take care of that. Uh, we have uh, uh, the middle of the week, it's, um, it'll be a presentation of kind of the old days of, uh, we'll have a whole, whole day uh, just uh, experiencing um, some exciting uh, events of uh, uh, the whole 1840s. We had a wagon wheel made, more so uh, put together in front of us. That was exciting. I remember that year. Uh, any other experiences? What's that? Pioneer Games. Pioneer Games, correct. Uh, we have uh, uh, a few people, I think, that uh, get this together. But basically, um, what is what's some Pioneer Games? Hoop rolling. Hoop rolling. Hoop it sounds rolling. silly, but I tell you what, when you get together, you're all hoop rolling. <laughs> Everybody goes crazy and spend hours doing it. All right. So I'll, I'm um, I'm really glad that uh, everybody's come and um, uh, to experience the first the first general meeting of the year for uh, 2014. Uh, Ochoa. Um, Travis. Here. Yeah. Um, that you would be close to uh, presentation time. Right? I can go. Is that a possibility? Yeah. So. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, have Travis here. He's going to show us uh, the uh, uh, show us the PowerPoint and discuss many things. And uh, I, I <laughs> Travis, <laughs> Travis, you have the clicker right there uh, too. So. To, um, along the line, we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the, uh, the hierarchy of the of the of the, uh, of the wagon train, who runs the show, how it's run. We're going to try to do it on a on the quick, just to get some preliminaries up to them. So uh, we're going to discuss who the board is, who you know, some of the board positions that maybe are open. So a lot of us can think about that. We have junior positions to think about. We'll talk about that. There's just uh, some positions to talk about. But for right now, um, uh, Travis. Okay, so what is 4-H wagon track? Okay, I was trying. I thought I plugged it in and everything is working. Last year's trip, you can see 
various uh, situations and activities. We have hikers, we have walkers, we have people that are uh, driving the, the wagon, doing the teams. Last year we had uh, a stagecoach, we had a hack, and we even had a two-wheeled cart for a little while. So uh, the unique thing about this trip and, and group is that we're trying to bring in as many people and kind of preserve some of those old ideas and those historical processes um, that uh, kind of get lost in our modern age. So program, I'm not going to read this to you, I'm going to leave it up there for a minute for you to read through it, but this is the program. Okay. We have additional handouts and information where you can read this information, but I try to share this. I do um, this presentation to a lot of outside groups, OET groups, other equestrian groups, school situations, stuff like that, and this is the program in a nutshell. The program is actually but this is about the best we can distill it. <laughs> and the thing I like to kind of finish with is the wagon train will instill a new appreciation for Oregon history, the environment, and animals, and also to help develop leadership skills. This group is very, very unique because we touch on so many different aspects of life. And, and, I, and I mean that just life in general. You will come away after doing this trip with new tools, new resources, and new experiences that will make your regular life better. And it'll be better because after you have, as we put it, survived wagon train, little things in life like power outages and other stuff just become high. No big deal. As you uh, learn to cope when you're out in the backcountry with a lot less. And you do things like this, climbing big hills. This happens to be a hill in the Ojibwe, by the way. And you learn teamwork, and you learn caring, and you learn sharing, and you learn just lots of other human elements that at times, you know, aren't available on Facebook or Pinterest or <laughs> Google Plus or other stuff. We kind of force you to get along with each other by putting you into a uh, unique situation. So these are the goals. I'll let you read through that real quick. We do have a purpose besides just having a fantastic time. And these goals are not just meant for the kids, they are meant for the adults as well. Our overall focus is to help and develop kids. I mean, we are 4-H, we are a youth development program, but there is absolutely no reason that any adult that's in this room can't learn and grow and come away with a lot more. So that is something I try to stress that all the adults that get involved with this program is it is here for you as well. Where's Lee? Lee, stand up. Last year, Lee rode a horse for the very first time. And Lee got to be a big kid. And that, to me, was one of the best things about Wagon Train for my trip last year, because I helped somebody fulfill a dream, be a kid, and ride the whole trip. Nothing wrong with that. a few images of the different stuff that we do. We are hands-on. We are active. We always have something going on and something to occupy your time. Whether it is Pioneer Games here in the lower left-hand corner is the boys doing a three-legged race on layover day or the omnipresent dishes every time we eat. Or meeting time, we meet, talk, several times a day so we can make sure all the information is disseminated out to everybody the way it needs to so everybody knows what the plan is. We have our gear and that has to give you an idea so all of your gear gets moved for you each day with luggage truck and with the support crew. We are, we're organized as various components that get things done so you don't have to get your sleeping bag and your clothes and your toothbrush and all that stuff to the next camp that gets done for you. Um, and then there's time out on the trail in the far left-hand corner. We stop for lunch, we journal, we tell stories, we write stories, we kind of have an ongoing journal program where the kids get to add stuff uh, and just keep the story going. These are the 
benefits of the program, although the benefits of the program don't fit on one page. The benefits of the program are kind of a benefit. This is who can participate. And if you can't go this year, we would love to have you next year or the year after or whenever you're old enough to go. I started this program with my son. He and I went first. And then the wife came, and then eventually my daughter was old enough to go. Um, and it's just a tremendous family experience. And now even his grandmother, Kathy, goes. Granny! So, Granny! <laughs> Granny's actually really, really important. <laughs> and we'll explain that one later. <laughs> so all uh, all adults who go on the trip are registered as a 4-H leader. So you will go through a background check and get reviewed, and that is how we know uh, that everybody we have with us on the trip is appropriate to be with us on the trip. Uh, the other thing that does is it makes all of you leaders. Does that mean we will give all of you jobs? No. No, but you're there, and if you have resources and you have Thank information you. that you can share, where did it go? There. Uh, then by all means, raise your hand and participate. Uh, we are always looking for new ideas, new solutions, new concepts that we can apply to what we're doing. And the only way the group grows and changes is by bringing in new ideas and new thoughts and new processes. So this gives you a little bit of the leadership structure. Wagon Master's at the top. He oversees the entire thing for the entire year. Uh, the scout is the person who develops the, tra the trail that we're gonna go on and leads the train. The scout does a couple other things, including coordination with the Forest Service and any agencies we have to deal with, Home dot, all of that stuff. This is a massive logistics undertaking to take all of these people and all of this equipment and all of these animals out into the forest for a week and then bring them all back safely. Um, and that means we interface with a lot of different agencies and a lot of different entities to coordinate and let them know that we're there and get a permit. Our group is so large that we are forced to have a permit each year. The camp boss, who's currently in Arizona on extended semi-retired vacation, oversees the operation of the camp. Once we pull into camp, the wagon master is usually exhausted and can then take a break, and the camp boss takes over, and he runs the show and organizes things and keeps everything on track while we're in camp. The lead teamster oversees all the teams and wagons because we have all these teams and wagons. And uh, then we have lead sport, who oversees all the logistics for the trip, getting all of us and our stuff and our water and our biffies and all of that stuff and food and flat tires and all the stuff that goes on with the trip. He takes care of that. Our cook, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry is the most beloved man in the room. Jerry can never do anything wrong because Jerry is the cook. And Jerry is a really, really, really good cook. And he makes this trip absolutely amazing. Very, very well, very nutritious food, and lots of it. He cooks us breakfast, and he cooks us dinner, and we eat lunch out on the trail of sandwiches and fruit and chips and all of that other stuff. Uh, Lee Walker is the person that's kind of out in front of all the hikers and walkers groups and just tries to oversee them and make sure that they're maintaining pace, staying hydrated. Um, nobody's getting sunburned. Oh, that was sad. Uh, <laughs> and uh, maintains uh, kind of the midpoint radio communication. The Wrangler oversees the safety of the horses and the mules and the riders and coordinates all of that. And we have all these animals and all this livestock out there that becomes a separate management job. The Ramrod, Leslie, Leslie, stand up, Leslie. Leslie is our Ramrod. She is the opposite of Mitch as far as being leadership at the back end of the train. There is nobody ever behind Leslie. She is it. She makes sure everything makes it all the way to camp every single time. And we maintain communication from the front of the train to the back of the train via radios and relays. And should anything ever happen to Mitch, or in this case this year, Mitch will be our paramedic. We had a situation where Mitch had to go into paramedic mode as opposed to wagon master mode. 
Leslie is who takes over and runs the chain of command to get us all into camp safely. She's kind of important. And then juniors. So for all of these positions and a couple of more, we have juniors. And what we do as part of our program for teaching leadership and youth development is we get kids that are interested in doing these jobs and they get paired up with the adults and they shadow the adults during the year. They come to a couple board meetings, understand how the board meeting system works and decision making gets done and they're involved with it. They have a voice. And then out on the trip, they shadow the leader to learn the job and doing the job. And then for one to two days on the trip, all of us adults turn it over to the kids. And if we've done a good job with the kids, the kids run the show. And that is sometimes the best day. Because the kids are in charge. They make all the decisions and they get to deal with all the chaos. And it's awesome. With cookies. With cookies, yes. <laughs> we don't abandon them. Spirit. Yes, spirit is not on this list. Maybe. <laughs> and making us all have a, have a really good time. A couple of pictures of experiences we have. The one on the far left is when we, uh, what's the highway outside of Sisters? I can never remember that. 20, going into Sisters. We actually had to cross Highway 20 a couple years ago outside of Sisters. That was a lot of fun, shutting down the highway so that we could all move all the way across. And it went off without a hitch. We have um, highway safety plans in place. We have to have all of this information put together and submitted to the Forest Service, the various agencies that go around doing that. And we have a whole kind of logistics solution with radios and flaggers and the whole thing so that we can run traffic interface and do all that. The number one goal of this group is to be safe. And that is a tall task when you take all of these people and then you stuff in horses and mules and outriders and vehicles and traffic and the public. And I'm happy to say for the last couple of years, we've brought basically everybody back in one piece. Basically. Physically. Basically. There's always one. There's always one. Uh, so staging is where we start the trip, where we all gather in a central location. It's always been predefined, it's set up, there's maps, there's information, timelines, everything you need to know to be able to get there. Staging is where you will come in, drop off all your stuff, park your vehicle for a week, and that is where we will leave from. Order of the train, you have the scouts out in front, we run interference, and that's actually going to be very important in the Ocho Coast based upon our most recent Ocho Coast experience where we started the trip in the middle of an endurance ride. So we were sharing the trail with endurance riders who weren't really expecting to come around the corner and find a tore up hitch of mule. <laughs> and uh, a few other things. It made for some really entertaining moments though watching horses and riders go flying in. But we are out in the National Forest and we run across all sorts of other forest users. And probably the biggest thing that the scouts do is be a pre-warning of what is coming behind so that we can interface with those people we run across on quads and motorcycles. Last year we had a number of motorcycles out on the trail. Um, uh, it won't be any sort of hunting season specifically over there, but we run across people out there doing that. We run across the Forest Service itself gold panners, rock collectors, and general people out in the woods. Um, and then it's wagons. The walkers go behind the wagons. That's kind of a safety issue to make sure that they're behind them. And then the outriders bring up the rear. And then the support crew usually runs an alternate route. They're not on the same trail. Anymore. Kind of a day one situation. I'm going to run through these really quick. 
but uh, you can read and kind of see what a typical day one starting point is. The next couple of days, kind of typical things. Um, we get out and see all sorts of unique stuff and have all sorts of new experiences, interface with wildlife. Um, for those of you that don't spend a lot of time camping and being out in the backcountry, it is a uh, unique experience to get out and see all sorts of wildlife and nature and mosquitoes. Might as well not shoot the ghost on the ship. Then layover day, the all important layover day, which is kind of a midpoint of the trip where we stop, take a break, stay put for a day. And that is also where we invite friends and family to come out and visit with us and hang out. We do lots of fun activities. It's the time where we're a lot less rushed. You can get an extra nap in. You can clean yourself. We actually hope you will clean yourself on layover days. Um, there are no extra special buttons for who can stay the filthiest to walk. Uh, and then we do lots of camp uh, activities and family games. Usually, you know, change up the menu a little bit and do some different stuff. Last year we did uh, Dutch oven cooking, which was kind of a first for us, trying to feed this massive group all out of Dutch ovens, but it was a heck of a lot of fun to go do that and uh, gave Jerry a little bit of a break. More stuff that goes on on layover day, like I said, washing. That's my daughter getting her hair washed. That's uh, Wayne, who's currently in uh, Nicaragua, but he's one of our teamsters, and he's one of the key instigators in the Pioneer Games, and he brings a whole bunch of them to engage the kids. This goes back to when we had uh, Rob out, and we set a, a tire on a wooden rope rim with the kids. That was a lot of fun. And then a couple years ago, layover day worked out. We took everybody over to the lake, and everybody got to go swim. So we, we like to find water and uh, music. Because even if we can't force the kids to wash, they get a somewhat clean if they're out in the rest. And they, yeah, they do that voluntarily. And then the next couple days on the trail. Yes, for those of you that have been on a trip, try to spot yourself. Try to wave Waldo. <laughs> Good Friday. We kind of end the trip with a talent show. Because the kids get the opportunity to spend all week forging new friendships, making new friends, learning about each other, and then they come up with skits and songs and all sorts of wonderfulness that then they put on. And the adults are allowed to not always just make props, although I will say Larry makes a pretty good prop, um, and participate in the talent show. Day th last day, Saturday, of course, all of my one-time, all-time favorite photos, that's Sheldon. Well, Travis did mention his two traditions, Scout and Wagon Rats. Did they don't sleep that entire week with him on the So, a little bit about meals. That's why I joined. <laughs> hot meal at the end of a very long day solves all manner of <laughs> night watch. We, uh, you will be tired. If you bring an animal, they will be tired. And that is part of our goal. You know, we don't go out for a couple hours for a brief walk in the woods, if at all possible. We actually like to really, really, really wear you out. Uh, for a wide variety of reasons. But uh, ultimately, uh, that's how you have the most fun. That's it. Now, for the rest of the evening, we'll go through all the rest of the stuff and try to answer as many questions as you want. Great. Thank you.
have to pay attention to. Let's keep it quiet and listen. All righty then. So my other mission in life is to make sure that I get everybody signed up for the cost of paperwork, and then I turn it into the county so they can do their background checks, and then we're all set and ready to go. The most important thing for the group as a whole is to get the paperwork back in a timely manner. We got a date on the uh, schedule to have all the paperwork turned in by by May 17th. If I don't have paperwork by May 17th, Washington County Employees doesn't have enough time to do their research and could end up not having being able to go. Um, I printed off a bunch of uh, copies tonight, but I'm absolutely thrilled with the turnout here tonight, so I might not have enough copies for everybody here. But by the next general meeting, for those that I don't have paperwork for, I will. So, there's two sets of paperwork. One is for a youth. Who's a youth? If you're over 18, you're 18 and over, you're an adult. I think we had one or two birthdays since last at Wagon Train. People that turned into us. So they're going to have to go for a youth on your adult volunteer paperwork. Yes, sir. If we did the paperwork last year, we have to do it. Oh, yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Brand new year. Brand new year. So we have to do paperwork every, every year. One of the things, well, the one big thing that has changed for the adults, volunteers, this year, I will need a copy of a picture, ID card, ID card or driver. That is mandatory for all of us adult people. So uh, we're all doing paperwork with your ID card again this year. Sir? Yes. Can I be, you want a copy of our picture ID or <coughs> the original so you can copy it? I could bring my copy. I could bring my copy. No, you just deal with it. A copy is okay to bring. Yes, a copy is okay to bring. As long as I can see the pretty face, we're going to get a picture. Gary. Yes, sir. Douglas has one problem. Yes, sir. He only wants to know, is the picture they've got on file over at the sheriff's department? Is that going to be okay? <laughs> I'm sure once I turn the paperwork in. What's that? Once I turn the paperwork in, it's... <laughs> Here and you have kinders going, you want to make sure you fill out the paperwork with them uh, so we can get um, all the proper information. Um, there's an enrollment form. The second page in there is kind of a checklist page for uh, participation in something that you do other than 4-H wagon train. If you're in some other 4-H group, whether it's dealing with animals or plants, horticulture, or some of that stuff, that's also in there for you. You can check that off. There is actually nothing on here that says 4-H wagon train. You'll have to handwrite that in. Okay? We're a special group. The next page um, in the adult volunteer is the 4-H code of conduct. And we kind of talk about this in some of our meetings as we go later into the year. The next page is please attach a copy of, of an official photo ID. It's a very important page right there. And that's part of the criminal background check for adults. information from OSU, because we're part of OSU as a 4-H uh, group. <coughs> the, there is a page on here, the official 4-H health form. Um, I look at this as the uh, medic uh, involved with this, the, the medical personnel involved with this. When you don't put your medicines on here, when you don't put your uh, uh, tetanus shots and a few other things, the information, what <coughs> Probably half or more of you are going to do. I hope you don't, but please write it in for a medicine because it's a real pain to call you and eat you up and ask you to put it on there. I will do that uh, only because when you potentially, when there's troubles, troubles happen and accidents. I work as a paramedic and other peers have other uh, medical jobs and we call them accidents because they happen. But when you're, when you're out and you're unconscious or you can't talk or something and you can't give me this information, we have this. We're going to have this. Confidential. I will have this only. And um, HIPAA rules all is very um, strongly uh, secure. So this information that you write on here is very important to 
medical information, meds, allergies, you know, uh, insurances, and, and just fill in. As soon as you give, once you give me all this stuff, and as uh, Mitch has said, that medical stuff is a privileged information. We're going to share that. I get a copy of it. Let me turn your paperwork, and then all that goes to you. The other things that have uh, happened as far as paperwork is fee changes. I know everybody was curious about what fees are. The price hasn't changed from last year. As a wagon train moved from last year, we actually finished the year with surplus. So for you, and we've actually got a couple of scholars, uh, we've actually got some donations last year from scholarship. So scholarship money is again available this year. If you haven't done essays or some of that other stuff from the year, Previous and years past, or have not filled the junior leadership role, there are some um, scholarships for that also. So I will have all the scholarship information at the next general meeting. If you are interested in doing some leadership positions or doing some essays on some of that stuff, I'll say why you over here a couple of weeks. Questions? Facebook group page. I went back to fees. You got to finish talking about fees. Fees this year are $200. And if you're bringing a uh, 